o'clock, so we'll go ahead and call the Planning, Programming, and Zoning Commission meeting to order. First item on the agenda is approval of the agenda. Any revisions? If not, do we have a motion to? So moved, Schoberg. Second, Tricia. Certainly. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion approved. Next we'll have approval of minutes of the regular meeting from October 11th. Um, any revisions, discussion? I'll make a motion to approve. Parish. Second, Lysticle. Okay, all those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carried. Next, we'll have the financial report for September, please. Mr. Schrader with staff. Uh, this is uh, through September, which would put us at 25% of the fiscal year. Uh, looking down the expense side, um, 26, 30, 30 for an overall of 26. So really close to right on budget there. On the revenue side, looking down the columns, 19, 20%, 37%, 11. Um, for a grand total of only nine though, actually, so we're a little low on the revenue side, but we have a lot of that um, would be based on anticipated property sales and we still got uh, plenty of time left in the fiscal year to complete some property sales. So we're looking pretty good. Any questions for staff? Okay, if not, do we have a motion to approve and place, or place that on file? So moved, Schoberg. Second, Parrish. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion carried. Next is the time for anyone um, in the chambers who is here to speak on an item that is not already on the agenda. Is there anyone in the chambers that's here to speak? Okay, and do we have anyone on Zoom or the phone? Okay, then we'll go on to new business. The time is 4.02 p.m. and a hearing is scheduled at this time for request by Porfirio Garza to rezone approximately 0.19 acres from R2, 1, and 2 family residence district to R2 CZ conditional zoning district to allow for a truck dispatching office and an accessory structure located at 504 Linden Avenue. At this time, we should receive and place on file a statement of verification signed by Patty McGee stating, I, Patty McGee, do hereby certify that a copy of the attached letter Overview map, aerials, and notice map were mailed to individuals on the attached list on October 20th, 2022. Can we have a motion to receive and place this notice on file? So, so move, Lysico. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion is carried. We will have the staff report, please. This is Blanco staff. The applicant plans to hire a dispatcher for his trucking company and have them work out of the 10 by 29 accessory structure located adjacent to the existing home on the property. It would appear that rezoning of the property to R2CZ could have a negative impact on the area as the area is primarily residential. The request could also have a negative impact on vehicular and pedestrian traffic in the area at the site. In question is served by Linden Avenue, which is considered a local street, and Franklin Street, which is considered a minor arterial street. A commercial use and the traffic that it may generate may not be compatible with the residential area. The proposed rezone area is currently zoned R2, 1 and 2 family residence district and has been zoned as such since the adoption of the zoning ordinance in 1969. Surrounding land uses and their zoning are as follows. To the north are single family homes, zoned R2, one and two family residence district and R mark services, zoned M1 light industrial district. To the south and to the east are single family homes, zoned R2, one and two family residence district and to the west is single family homes, 
zoned R2 1 and 2 family residence district and R2 CZ conditional zoning district. As a condition of the rezone request, there will be no outside storage allowed and no parking of trucks on the lot, so screening would not appear to be needed as part of this request. The site includes an existing structure which will need to meet building codes, therefore it would appear that a drainage plan will be needed. The existing structure is a shed on skids and there are multiple issues with the building meeting building and zoning regulations as a commercial building. The future land use map designates this area as low density residential. The proposed rezone is not in conformance with the future land use map and comprehensive plan. The CZ conditional zoning classification works to allow uses in unique locations or transitional sites between different land uses. The applicant did not receive a building permit for the structure and the shed is currently sitting on skids. The building to be used as an office will need to meet all commercial building codes. The applicant will need to add a frost protected foundation, an ADA bathroom, and an ADA ramp. If approved to become a commercial building with an existing dwelling on the property, the uses would be non-compliant with multiple zoning regulations, including minimum lot size for each principal permitted use, minimum setback requirements between two principal permitted uses, and proper hard surfacing for the commercial use. At Tech Review Engineering noted, a drainage plan will be needed since the building will not be allowed to stay on skids mm -hmm. and the requirement to add hard surfacing was confirmed. Therefore, staff recommends that the request by Porfirio Garza to rezone approximately 0.19 acres from R2 1 and 2 family residence district to R2 CZ conditional zoning district to allow for a truck dispatching office and an accessory structure adjacent to a house located at 504 Linden Avenue be denied for the following reasons. The site is in a primarily low density residential area and could have a negative impact on the neighborhood. The building does not currently meet the building regulations and zoning regulations because no permit was applied for. The proposed rezone is not in conformance with the future land use map and comprehensive plan. If the commission votes to approve the rezone request, staff recommends the following conditions, that there is no parking of trucks or trailers on the lot and that there is no outside storage. Okay. Initial questions by the commission. I'm gonna abstain from this one for conflict of interest. All right. Is the applicant or someone on behalf of the applicant here to speak to the commission? Um, is the applicant on the phone or by Zoom? Okay, is anyone else in the chambers here to speak on this agenda item? Do we want to entertain a motion to close the public hearing? Motion to close the public hearing. Second, Sir Fling. Okay, all those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the public hearing is closed. Is there a motion by the commission? I will make the motion that the request by Porfirio Garza to rezone approximately 0.19 acres from R21 and two family residence district to R2CZ conditional zoning district to allow for a truck dispatching office and an accessory structure adjacent to a house located at 504 Linden Avenue be denied. Second, Schoberg. Okay, any discussion? Okay, all those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, and one abstention. Okay. Motion that passes. Yeah, Jenna. Jenna. Okay. She voted. 
your eyes here. Okay, the time is 4, 10 p.m. and a hearing is scheduled at this time for request by A-Line EDS to rezone approximately 0.1 acres from commercial one, commercial district to commercial one CZ conditional zoning district to be extra yard space for the approved warehouse and maintenance facility located west of 722 Dearborn Avenue. At this time, we should receive and place on file a statement of verification signed by Patty McGee stating, I, Patty McGee, do hereby certify that a copy of the attached letter, overview map, aerial map, notice map, and site plan were mailed to the individuals on the attached list on October 20th, 2022. We have a motion to receive and place this notice in file. So moved, Parrish. Okay. Second, Schoberg. All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion carried. We'll have the staff report, please. The applicant, the applicant is requesting to rezone the site in question to allow for the construction of a fence near the property lines abutting the residences at 702 Dearborn Avenue and 722 Dearborn Avenue and to expand the previously approved storage yard onto the property in question. The site is predominantly surrounded by vacant lots and residences with the existing A-Line EDS facility and mini storage company Rezoning of the property to C1CZ would not appear to have a negative impact on the area as the area is currently zoned for commercial uses and the lot would go with the area to the south, which was rezoned from C1 to C1CZ on June 14th, 2022. The proposed rezone area is currently zoned C1 commercial district and has been zoned as such since the adoption of the zoning ordinance in 1969 surrounding land uses and their zoning are as follows. To the north is residences and vacant land zone C1 commercial district. To the south is Canadian National Railroad and Dubuque Road and A-Line EDS approved site zone C1CZ. To the east is a one single family dwelling zone C1 commercial district. And to the west is Canadian National Railroad and Dubuque Road and one single family dwelling zone C1 commercial district. A drainage plan is required in relation to this request. The area to be rezoned is located within zone AE 100 year flood plain, which is a special flood hazard area as established by the Federal Emergency Management Association. The CZ conditional zoning classification works to allow uses in unique locations or transitional sites between different land uses. Staff is in support of this request as the fence will provide a buffer between the warehouse and the residential properties. At Tech Review, it was noted a drainage plan has been submitted and is being reviewed by the engineering department. Therefore, staff recommends that the request by A-Line EDS to rezone approximately 0.55 acres from C1 Commercial District to C1CZ conditional zoning district for additional storage yard area in conjunction with the proposed 24,000 square, square foot warehouse and maintenance facility located west of 722 Dearborn Avenue be approved for the, for the following reasons. The request would not have negative impact on traffic conditions in the area. The request would not have negative impact on the surrounding area. And the request is in conformance with the future land use map and comprehensive land use plan. Thank you. Any initial questions for staff from the commission? Okay. Is someone um, from the applicant or representative um, here to speak on this agenda item? Or on Zoom or by phone? Okay. Is anyone else in the chambers here to speak on this agenda item? Okay. Do we want to entertain a motion to close the hearing? I guess I just have one question. Nobody from 722 Dearborn has said anything about having any concerns. This is Blanco staff. No, I have okay. not heard any okay. um, comments on this request at all, actually. They requested it. They're the neighbors. They're the ones who requested this be rezoned, which we originally hadn't planned on putting the fence in between them. Can in you? Between the site. That's why we didn't rezone this. 
uh, parcel earlier with others. Then when we were speaking with them, removing the trees, they requested that the fence go in between both their houses just to keep anybody from wandering. So we're doing it to appease our neighbors. And can you identify yourself uh, for I'm a minute? I'm Wendy Young with A-Line EDS. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Parrish, do you have follow-up questions? Nope, on that? that's it. Motion to close the hearing. Yes. Motion to close public hearing. Second. Nice to go. We have a second. Second, Sir Flynn. All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any, op aye. any opposed? Okay. The public hearing is closed. We have a motion to entertain. Uh, this is Schoberg. I'll make a motion that we uh, make a motion that the request by A-Line EDS to rezone approximately 0.5 of acres from C1 Commercial District to C1 CZ Conditional Zoning District for additional storage yard in conjunction with the proposed 24,000 square foot warehouse and maintenance facility located at 722 Dearborn Avenue be approved for the following reasons. The request would not appear to have a negative impact on traffic conditions in the area. The request does not appear to have a negative impact on the surrounding area, and the request is in conformance with the future land use map. Okay. We have a second. Second, Shirk. Okay. All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. <laughs> Any opposed? Okay, motion is carried. Okay, the time is 4.17 p.m. and a hearing is scheduled at this time for a request by Bruce Gellerman to rezone approximately 3.4 acres from A1 Agricultural District to CP Planned Commercial District for a new restaurant located northeast of 2600 Chalice Road. At this time, we should receive and place in file a statement of verification signed by Patty McGee stating, I, Patty McGee, do hereby certify that a copy of the attached letter, overview map, aerial maps, site plan, and drawings were mailed to in the individuals on the attached list on October 20th, 2022. We have a motion to receive and place this notice in file. So moved, Parish. Second, Sir Flynn. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. We'll have the staff report, please. This is blank with staff. The applicant is requesting to rezone the property in question to construct a 7,813 square foot restaurant with a patio. The request would not appear to have a negative impact on the surrounding neighborhood, which mostly consists of abutting agricultural land and residential across Highway 218. The Shawless Road Trail is located directly south of the site along East Shawless Road. The proposed restaurant will also have a sidewalk that will extend from the trail to the building, it should be a condition to require that the applicant install approaches for a mid block crossing and potentially be required to install the crossing, including rectangular rapid flashing beacons in the future if determined to be warranted. Sidewalk should also be required to install along the frontage of the property so that it could potentially be connected to the sidewalk and trail system as adjacent parcels are developed. The area of the proposed site is zoned A1 Agricultural District and has been zoned as such since the adoption of the zoning ordinance in 1969. Surrounding land uses and zoning are as follows. To the north is Highway 218, commercial development and some vacant land. Zoned M1 Light Industrial District to the south is agricultural land. And Lost World State Park, zoned A1 Agricultural District and CP Planned. Commercial District to the east is residential area zoned M1 Light Industrial District and R1 RP planned one and two family residence district. To the west is agricultural land and Lost Island Water Park and Island Isle Hotel and Casino zoned A1 Agricultural District and CP planned commercial district. 
The property is mostly located in zone AE 100 year floodplain, which is a special flood hazard area as indicated by the Federal Insurance Administration's flood insurance rate map. The structure will be elevated to have a finished floor area of 851.5 feet or 2.5 feet above the base flood elevation. The applicant is requesting to rezone 3.46 to rezone a 3.46 acre property northeast of 2600 East Charles Road to construct a restaurant. The proposed CP designation is intended for the residential and commercial developments of tracts of land on a unit basis, allowing greater flexibility and diversification of land uses and building locations than the conventional single lot method. The CP zoning will enable the restaurant to have greater flexibility in regards to setbacks, lot configuration, and other parameters associated with building on a triangular lot. And as a site plan specific district, it will ensure for a compatible design of the development to fit with existing and planned future development of the area. The proposed parking lot contains 110 stalls with four of those being served for handicapped parking. The size of the building is 7,813 square feet with a 4,768 square feet of indoor patron use area per the zoning ordinance. One parking space is required for every 100 square feet of indoor patron use area and one space per every 200 square feet of outdoor patron use area. This equates to 59 total required parking stalls and 110 are being provided to exceed the requirement. The applicant is proposing hardy board siding with galvanized steel wainscoting. Cherry wood colored aluminum metal panels will be located around the windows to implement more details on the facade. The patio will be accessed by three full glass and aluminum overhead sectional doors and the proposed design is compatible with the surrounding area. Therefore, staff recommends that the request by Bruce Brillman to rezone 3.46 acres northeast of 2600 East Shawless Road from A1 Agricultural District to CP Planned Commercial District to construct a new restaurant be approved for the following reasons. The request would not appear to have a negative impact on the surrounding area, and the request would not appear to have a negative impact upon pedestrian and traffic conditions within the surrounding area. The site will bring a neighborhood commercial use to a tourism destination north of a residential area that sits along Waterloo's Highway 218 corridor and subject to the following conditions. That sidewalk be installed along the frontage of the property. That sidewalk approaches and curb drops be installed to connect pedestrians from the site in question to the bike trail across Shawless Road. That the Shawless Road pedestrian crossing will initially be an unmarked crossing. However, the applicant would be responsible to install the crossing and related elements, painting, signage, and wire rectangular rectangular rapid flashing beacons in the future if the city of Waterloo determines that they are warranted based on pedestrian use and safety. That a street light be installed within the right of way of Shawless Road at the proposed driveway and that the final site plan meets all applicable city codes, regulations, etc., including but not limited to parking, landscaping, screening, drainage, etc. Thank you. Does the commission have initial questions? When is it deemed necessary to put in the um, flashing signs, essentially? And well, so what is the speed limit on that road? 45. Schrader with staff, yeah, I believe 45. And this um, was reviewed with the City of Waterloo traffic engineer. Um, so we would probably ha have to do some additional uh, analysis once the structure would be built and operating to look at um, whether or not there's a safety issue there based on the speed that road is getting reconstructed. Uh, there's additional development occurring. 
Um, so there's a lot of unknowns and we didn't really feel that it was appropriate to just assume that the improvement uh, of the um, rectangular flashing beacon crossing would be needed right away. Um, but we thought if it ends up being a concern from a, a traffic engineer and traffic safety standpoint, that the condition should be there, that, that it would be required. So the short answer is that we'd have to do some additional study and review. Other questions by the commission? Is the applicant here or someone on behalf of the applicant? Please state your name um, and address for the record. My name is Rich Ayers, Ayers Design Group, 6876 Harding Street, Indianola, Iowa. I'm here with, in behalf of Bruce Gerlman and we concur with staff comments and we'll be working with them as we work through the site plan. Uh, be happy to answer any questions. We're excited about coming to this area. Any questions? Anyone on the phone or Zoom have questions? Thank you. Is anyone else in the chambers here to speak on this agenda item? Okay, anyone else on the phone or Zoom here to speak on this agenda item? Okay. Do we want to entertain a motion to close the hearing? So moved, Schoberg. Second, Parrish. All those in favor of the motion to close the public hearing? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, public hearing is closed. Does the commission have a motion? Surfling, I'll make a motion that we approve the request by Bruce Gerlerman to rezone 3.46 acres northeast of 2600 East Shawless Road from A1 Agriculture District to CP Plan Commercial District to construct a new restaurant. Be approved for the following reasons. The request would not appear to have a negative impact on the surrounding area, nor a negative impact upon pedestrian and traffic conditions within the surrounding area. The site will bring a neighborhood commercial use to a tourism destination north of a residential area that sits along Waterloo's Highway 218 corridor and subject to the following conditions. That sidewalk be installed along the frontage of the property. That sidewalk approaches and curb drops be installed to connect pedestrians from the site in question to the bike trail across Shawless Road. That the Shawless Road pedestrian crossing will initially be an unmarked crossing. However, the applicant would be responsible to install the crossing and related elements, painting, signage, and wired rectangular rapid flashing beacons in the future of the city of Waterloo. He determines that they are warranted based on pedestrian use and safety. That a street light be installed within the right of way of Shawless Road at the proposed driveway. That the final site plan meets all applicable city codes, regulations, including but not limited to parking, landscaping, screening, and drainage. Second, Parrish. Any discussion? All right, all those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carried. Okay, the next item on the agenda is a request by Ritland Cooper Landscaping on behalf of the City of Waterloo Leisure Services for a special permit for the construction of new uh, recreation facilities at Gates Park located in the A1 Agricultural District, M2 Heavy Industrial District, and R2 
one and two family residence district located at and adjacent to 620 East Donald Street. We have the staff report, please. Yeah, this is a uh, hybrid with the staff report. Uh, the applicant is requesting a special permit to allow for recreational facilities. The request would not appear to have a negative impact on the surrounding area as proposed facilities will be replacing mostly existing facilities uh, servicing the families of the immediate area and creating new facilities for the entire community to utilize. The proposed request would not appear to have a negative impact on traffic conditions in the area. Uh, the facilities are located on East Donald Street, which is classified as a minor arterial, and East 4th Street, which is classified as a collector. Uh, portions of the uh, complex are uh, also served by Mildred Avenue, Dale, Lynn, Mason, and Barkley Clay Streets, which are all classified as local streets. Uh, there is a sidewalk on East uh, Donald Street, uh, west of Gates Park. There is no sidewalks in Mildred or East Dale Streets. There are sidewalks on both sides of East 4th Street, the south side of Leicester Street, uh, with a gap west of Mason Street, both sides of Lynn Street. And uh, there are no sidewalks in North Barclay or Mason Streets or most of the side streets that terminate at the former Chamberlain site. Uh, there is a trail on the north side of East Donald Street that connects with the trails uh, within Gates Park, then heads west along uh, East and West Donald Streets to uh, Heath Street. Uh, the area of the existing uh, Gates Park is zoned A1 Agricultural District. Former Ch Chamberlain site is zoned M2 Heavy Industrial District. And uh, Lower Gates Park is zoned R2 1 and 2 Family Residence District and have been zoned as such since the adoption of the zoning ordinance in 1969. Uh, surrounding land uses in their zoning are as follows East Donald Street and residential zoned R2 1 2 Family Residence District. Residential zoned R2, one and two family residence district to the south. Uh, to the east is uh, Gates Park, uh, golf course zoned A1 agricultural district. To the west, residential zoned R2, one and two family residence district. Um, uh, residences in the area were built between 1904 and 1976. No buffering will be required for this request. A drainage plan will need to be submitted to the engineering department. Uh, portions of the property are located in a special flood hazard area as indicated by, uh, by FEMA. Um, the, uh, um, the, there is a eight inch uh, sanitary sewer line in the East Donald Street, a 12 inch sanitary sewer line in East 4th Street, 15 inch storm sewer in vacated Anita Street along the alley behind the homes on the east side of East 4th Street to uh, Louis Street, 12 inch storm sewer line that starts just north of Iowa Northern Railroad tracks uh, running south from there, a 36 inch sanitary sewer line that runs through Lower Gates Park, an eight inch uh, sanitary sewer line in Leicester Street and a 12 inch storm sewer that runs in Leicester from Glen Street to Mason Street. A future land use map designates the area as parks, open space, uh, spaces, schools, hospital, government facilities, public areas and airport with the former Chamberlain site designated as industrial on the future land use map. Um, the uh, existing pool at Gates Park, which is past its life expectancy, will be replaced by a new splash pad. In addition to new splash pad, there will be a new playground equipment, uh, which will include uh, inclusive park equipment, will be installed to the east and south of the new splash pad. And to the north of Luis Street will be an improved soccer field, along with uh, basketball courts, roller skating trail around the courts, a uh, playground and shelter. The parking lot at the end of Louis Street will also see improvements. The former Chamberlain site will also be turned into parkland with a trail on the eastern portion of the site and several potential park related facilities on the west side of the property such as earthwork mounds, potential sculpture locations and prairie plantings. Uh, along Leicester Street, Lower Gates Park uh, will see improvements including an improved parking lot and uh, relocating the play equipment on the south of the new flood wall. Uh, parking requirements for the facilities, one space for four persons of parking capacity of the facility, ensuring proper parking will be done uh, during the building permit process. The applicant is not planning to subdivide the property at this time. Therefore, staff recommends that the request by Ritland Kuiper Landscaping on behalf of the City of Waterloo Leisure Services for special permit for the construction of a new recreational facility is at Gates Park located in the A1 Agricultural District, M2 Heavy Industrial District, and R2 1 and 2 Family Residence District located at adjacent to 620 uh, East Donald Street be approved for the following reasons. Uh, the existing pool facilities are beyond their lifespan and require replacement. 
Uh, the request would not appear to have a negative impact on the surrounding area and in fact would have a positive impact uh, by improving recreational opportunities. Um, it would not appear to have a negative impact on traffic or pedestrian traffic in the area as current parking conditions will be improved but not relocated from existing locations. Uh, the multiple recreational facilities will, uh, being provided will work to vastly expand the recreational opportunities of the area and help bring in additional patrons to the park area. And that's the staff report. Initial questions by the commission? Okay, is someone for Ritten, uh, Ritland Kuiper here to address the commission? Yes, I'm Mark Kuiper from Ritland Kuiper Landscape Architects, and I don't have a formal presentation, but I'm uh, here to answer any questions that might arise. Okay. Anyone on phone or by Zoom have any questions? Okay. Um, I know that you guys hosted some more public meetings recently about this project. Did you get any feedback from the community or the neighborhood? Yeah, we had some great discussions uh, with area residents. There are uh, uh, still people in the neighborhood that uh, expressed ongoing concerns about uh, wanting to have a pool in, in uh, Gates Park, and we certainly understand that. And we talked through the uh, process that was gone through in the uh, the aquatics master plan, uh, why why the city has uh, moved toward uh, opportunities to expand the recreational opportunities in Gates Park beyond that, and then. Um, really tried to address those questions and had some great discussions with area residents. And then we had some input on the playground equipment and aquatic uh, splash pad uh, features that were going to be uh, implemented there, hoping that uh, by uh, collecting all those votes that we could represent um, what everybody wanted. So we got some great input. Uh, are there any plans to tie in the park with the trail system in the area? Yes, uh, we uh, we actually are expanding. Um, that there is a there is a small loop there. We're actually making the loop a little bit larger, and then we are connecting with the trail along Donald, and then uh, we're actually taking the the uh, trail from that North Gates area. We're connecting through the soccer field area, through the Chamberlain site, to the uh, uh, we can't go through the levy area. The the uh, uh, the Verdon Creek area of Lower Gates Park. So we're going along uh, fourth, East 4th Street on the sidewalk, and then there is uh, some additional uh, sidewalk and trail on the south side as well. So yeah, it would be a great expansion and connection with the area trails. What will happen with the existing flood wall? Is that gonna be removed or redone? So, yeah, so part of the proposal is, is uh, not, to, not to actually do anything with the wall itself other than to enhance it okay. uh, uh, visually. So uh, we're gonna be exploring some, uh, creating some uh, sculpted mounds and uh, trees uh, in front of the wall that would actually uh, really obscure it from view from the street for most of the area. There are some uh, exposed areas of the wall that we're looking at some possible facing alternatives, uh, putting some some type of facing material on it. Uh, on the, at the corner of East Fourth uh, and Leicester, we'd be looking at uh, a signage opportunity there to actually just really enhance it with a nice uh, Gates Park sign. And then where there's an entry through the wall, we'd look at uh, maybe a, a cast stone cap and some other enhancements of the wall where it's exposed and we can't do the mounding and the vegetation. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Okay, thank you. Anyone else on Zoom or by phone um, that wants to speak on this agenda item? Anyone else in the chambers that is here to speak on this agenda item? Okay. Uh, I will make a motion 
that the request by Ritlin Kuiper Landscaping on behalf of the City of Waterloo Leisure Services for a special permit for the construction of new recreational facilities at Gates Park located in the A1 Agricultural District, M2 Heavy Industrial District, and R2 and two family residence district located at and adjacent to 620 East Donald Street be approved for the following reasons. The existing pool facilities are beyond their lifespan. The request would not appear to have negative impact on the surrounding area and would actually have a positive impact. It would not have a negative impact on traffic and the multiple recreational facilities being provided will work to vastly expand the recreational opportunities in the area. Here a second. Second. Sure. Any discussion by the commission? <clears throat> okay. All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Any opposed? Okay. Motion carried. Next item on the agenda is a request by Envision Architecture on behalf of the City Waterloo Leisure Services for a special permit for the construction of new recreation facilities at Burns Park, located in the R1, 1, and 2 family residence district, located at 801 Campbell Avenue. And the staff report, please. Yeah, this is uh, Heiberger with the staff report. Uh, the applicant is Envision Architecture. The applicant is requesting a special permit to redevelop the existing recreational facilities at Burns Park Pool. Uh, the request will not appear to have a negative impact on the surrounding areas. The proposed facilities will be replacing existing facilities that serve the families of the surrounding area, as well as the larger Waterloo community. The proposed request would not appear to have a negative impact on traffic conditions in the area. The facilities are located on Campbell Avenue, which is considered a local street. Um, in front of the complex uh, then becomes a minor arterial, the east of Fledger Avenue, which is also a minor arterial. Uh, the nearest recreational trail is the Sergeant Road Trail, located to the north of the complex along U.S. Highway 63, and Leisure Services is looking at possibilities to connect the facility with the trail. Uh, the area is zoned R1, one and two family residence district, and has been zoned as such since the adoption of the zoning ordinance in 1969. Uh, surrounding land uses and their zoning are as follows, uh, to the north residential zone, R2, 1 2 family residence district. To the south, Irv Warren Memorial Golf Course zone, R1 and 2 family residence, family district. Uh, to the east is Burns Park and residential zone, R1, 1 and 2 uh, family district, uh, 1 and 2 single family district. Uh, Burns Park and Leisure Services facilities zone, R1, 1 and 2 family residence district. Uh, the uh, area consists of Le Leisure Services Building, uh, built between 1930 and 2015 in residential development, built between 1912 and 1960. No additional buffering should be required for this project. A drainage plan will need to be submitted to the engineering department. No portion of the property is located in a special flood hazard area. Um, the uh, there, there is a 27-inch storm sewer and four-inch drain tiles located in Campbell Avenue. Uh, there are overhead power lines that run along Vernon Avenue that enter the complex from the north. Uh, future land use map designates the area as parks, open spaces, schools, hospitals, government facilities, public areas, and airports, and proposed project would be keeping with the future land use map. Uh, the uh, applicant is requesting to replace the existing pool facility and building with new facilities. Uh, section 1027.1H6 of the zoning ordinance states that any commercial or outdoor recreational facility obtains a special permit uh, from the Board of Adjustment. Uh, the proposal would uh, replace the existing pool and uh, changing area with new facilities. The existing pool was built with an aluminum shell that has reached the end of its life and has had leaking issues the last few years, causing the pool to be closed during the summer outdoor swimming season. The new pool will be uh, a more modern facility with children's area with slides, a lap area, waiting area, and a walking section. In addition, the existing changing rooms and ticket office will be replaced by new facilities that will include areas for families. Parking requirements for the facility is one parking space for each four persons of maximum capacity at the facility 
and ensuring uh, proper parking will be done during the building permit process. The applicant uh, is not planning to subdivide the property at this time. Uh, therefore, staff recommends that the request by Envision Architecture on behalf of the City of Waterloo Leisure, Leisure Services for a special permit for the construction of a new recreational facilities at Burns Park, located at R1, 1 and 2 Family Residence District, located at 801 Campbell Avenue, be approved for the following reasons. Uh, the existing pool facilities are beyond their lifespan and require replacement. The request would not appear to have a negative impact on the surrounding area and in fact would have a positive impact on improving recreational opportunities. Um, it would not appear to have a negative impact on traffic or pedestrian traffic in the area as the parking lot and access points are, are not being changed. And that's the staff report. Any initial questions by the commission? Okay. Thank you. Is someone from Envision um, here? Please come forward and state your name. Good afternoon. My name is Brett Van Zee with Envision Architecture at 501 Sycamore. Um, I think it was a very nice staff report on the project along with imagery. I'm here really to answer any questions that the commission may have on this project. I guess I would also like to note that and it's probably known by most of the group, um, the last two projects you heard with Ritland Kuiper and also with this one, both with Leisure Services, we are working in tandem between those two. So there's a lot of continuity between those projects that you may already be noticing in the two building structures themselves. Okay. Questions by the commission? Yeah. I was just gonna ask, what kind of timeline are you looking at? So the Gates project is looking to move first. So on this project at Burns Park, we're looking to get in most of next season with the current pool, uh, start construction then late summer and or fall of next year. Um, then that construction would take into 2024. Um, we're still, um, we're trying to make it so that only one of those locations is down at a time. So it's more of a phased approach between Gates and Burns. So. Um, right now, I think we can commit, it's crazy to think, but uh, 25 for the opening. It'll be a little bit of a question on how soon we can open in 24 at this point. Anyone on Zoom or the, uh, by phone have any questions? Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Uh, Robin Nichols, Council Liaison. Um, I did have a question. I noticed that the design, um, uh, as compared to some of the early designs we'd seen of this, uh, I think the early design showed kind of a lazy river and uh, the wade in pool and then the lap pool kind of separated. Can you speak to the um, I don't see a lazy river in here and kind of the change in the design. So as we look at this project holistically and with the budget that we have, um, we did run into a couple budget constraints, which did um, require us to look at the sizing of the, over the overall pool. Um, so the lazy river was one element that we looked um, to pull out and replaced with a small, smaller walking channel. Um, we met and talked with Leisure Services um, about this project and really what amenities they felt best fit this community area. Um, the other reason why we looked at one overall body of water is when we connect all of the various pools, that actually helps us a lot on our mechanical side. We're able to cut down the amount of the mechanical equipment and the costs associated with that by connecting these various bodies of water instead of having two or three separate individual bodies of water. So we tried to just find ways that we could be more budget conscious with the overall layout and configuration. Um, I would note that um, compared to the current pool um, that's at Burns, our occupancy numbers that this pool can support um, are up by about a third. And that's really because the shallow area of a pool per state code 
um, allows a lot higher occupancy in the pool than a deep end does. And the current Burns pool is a significantly deeper overall pool structure. So really the amount of occupants that can use the current Burns pool compared to this new design has actually increased by about a quarter. So we're hoping between the deck surface area and the water amenities, um, while the pool size is a little bit smaller, um, there's more amenities overall com compared to the current pool, as well as it can support more of the community at a time. Are there any other questions from the commission? Um, anyone else in the chambers here to speak on this agenda item? And please state your name for the record and address. Paul Hudding, Leisure Services Director, City of Waterloo. I just want to let you know that I am here and I'm available for questions on actually on both of these uh, projects. Um, our our um, consultants did a fine job, so I think they've covered most of it, but but I'm here if there are any further questions. I guess similar to um, Commissioner Parrish's question on the last project, have there been concerns from the community on this project? We've had an ongoing series of dialogues and it, and it goes back to when we originally had a um, public meeting here in these chambers with the city council where we had a presentation we had a public hearing uh, and vote here. We also had a public vote at Leisure Services Commission and we, we um, backing up from that, we did have a survey with about a thousand respondents. That was electronic, it was COVID time. Um, so it, it was done in that manner. We then reached out um, to a special group who we thought were well in touch with the Gates community. And that focus group came up with a lot of the recommendations you see for the Gates Park amenities today. Uh, for me to stand up and say there's 100% uh, community support for this versus a pool, because it's about the same cost as a pool. It's, it's an either or, um, uh, just don't have the money to do both. And um, I, I think we're better meeting the needs of the community and especially based on the attendance reports from Gates Pool over the last, oh, 10 to 12 years they have been just extremely, extremely low. So it hasn't been used by the community. We we feel with the input from the focus group, the new facilities really will be. So, um, and we had two different uh, public input meetings on that um, Mr. Caper, uh, outlined for you and we did have a lot of input from folks there both on the picking the features for the, the play areas at Gates Park and on the overall concept and the reasons and that type of thing. I think in most cases I think Mark would probably agree with me once we had the conversation in depth with any individuals um, in most cases there was a general understanding that if the pool is not being used we should spend the money to build something that will be used. So, um, I think we're, I think we're in a better place than we were uh, a few months ago, and I, th I think that support is is, well, not a hundred percent. I think it's it's uh, overwhelmingly in favor of doing what we're doing instead of putting um, what would have to be a downsized pool in there. So, any other questions? They had talked about. I had heard, and I don't know if it's legitimate or not, but running like some kind of shuttle between the two sites at some point, is that? Yes, that that actually was mentioned in several of our grant applications, and, mm -hmm. and you're probably aware we have funding secured from a number of local fun funders, and the idea is to, and I have spoken with the director of Met Transit, or manager of Met Transit, um, the idea is to connect both parks, because we feel there'll be a, uh, demand to go both ways because there are a lot of features planned for Gates Park that we do not have at Burns Park or anywhere in that part of our city. And with the pool not being in Gates Park, of course it makes sense to make that accessible by uh, a shuttle. And 
the idea will be to have a free shuttle. We'll probably be looking for sponsors for that. Uh, we may do it with our operating budget, but that is in the that is in the plan. Other questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the chambers wish to speak on this agenda item? Come forward and state your name and address, please. Uh, my name is Ray Bruns. I live at 308 Lester, which is right across the street from Lower Gates. Um, the reason I didn't get up and uh, comment on the last agenda item, because my letter said my request for, was from Envision Architects. So um, I guess my concern um, by living across the street from the park, um, and this might be better addressed to the architects than to you guys, um, is the on the drawing, it appears that they want to remove an existing restroom and build a new one. Um, they want to, um, I, I appreciate them wanting to put trees and greenery along the flood wall because that's a terrible thing to have to look out across the street at and look at all the time because it's just a concrete wall. Um, they want to take out two full-size, well, two basketball courts and a tennis court and put in a half court basketball court, um, which looks pretty on paper, um, but when you live across the street from the park, you realize that, that that Gates Park has a long, long history of basketball games. They have 30 and over league, they have youth leagues, they play a lot of basketball on those two courts, and they want to reduce it to one half court. The facilities up at the upper gates would be beautiful, they would be lit, they would have all that We've never been able to get lights on the ones at lower gates. We have to beg sometime to get nets on the hoops or to get the courts painted. Um, and by living on Lester, I'm kind of concerned about the driveways and the traffic because um, right now there's just one entrance into the park with parking lots, which is great. Um, people drive in across the grass from the baseball field end of it and park behind the flood wall so that you can't see them. Another concern that I have is just lighting in general. Um, with the existing shelter, there's lights in there and everything, but the lights come on like at midnight and are on until like three o'clock when the park is closed. And so even in the evening, if you wanted to use the existing shelter, there's no lights. So, um, I mean, I like the idea of the things that they want to do. I just am not sure if I agree with the idea of tearing down something that's been there, like the basketball courts that have been there for years where it would be, in my opinion, cheaper to resurface than to rebuild. And um, so, yeah, I, I, and I don't know where the driveways come as far as, as Lynn and Mason, but, um, but yeah, that's, and I'm, I might be better off directing comments to you since I live right across the street, but that's kind of where I'm going with, with lower gates. Thank you. Well, I, I do appreciate the comments and the questions and um, in any public forum, that's uh, it's great to have that uh, feedback and I'll try and touch on what I remember from your questions as I go through. But uh, basically, the uh, as we worked with the focus group, um, one of the things that was talked about and, and certainly there's not, there wasn't uniformity on on the neighborhood and what they wanted, that we did hear from a few folks uh, in that Le Nestor, Lester neighborhood that they would rather not have the the noise that close to them. Um, the, as we work through what would what would be an appropriate venue, hosting for parking, the idea for having a major basketball venue, so instead of those two existing basketball courts that are located on Lester that are actually beyond their, they would have to be actually rebuilt uh, just in their current condition. Um, rather than rebuilding those uh, in their current location, we're actually going to expand and go to three courts in that in that north area. Um, you broke up a little bit. Can you say that again? With with the hope that uh, this would be a venue that would actually be uh, oh. able to host the the larger events like the. Go ahead if you wanted to. Um, Not that I'm aware. Of. If you are on Zoom, could you please mute? Oh. Thank you. And and uh, so so the the hope is that this this uh, this amphitheater that you saw pictures of would actually not only host with three large basketball larger basketball courts than are on 
uh, on Leicester Street. Uh, they would be larger and they would actually be able to host the, uh, a multitude of different events, whether it was basketball, uh, we could have other court games on there. Uh, the hope is to have uh, uh, organized uh, skating events. Uh, there's actually clubs that are doing skating um, and competitions and dance competitions of that nature. We want to be able to have, there's a, there's a performance structure that will host uh, large groups uh, for picnics and family gatherings and that kind of thing, but it'll also double as a performance venue. So you could have a small concert there. You could have uh, uh, barbecue and, and larger community events with much more parking, much more suitable land use for that kind of uh, larger group event. And um, we have seen that when, when that, and we, we are aware uh, just from personal experience, I played in that Gates Park <laughs> basketball league when I was in high school. So I remember how great it was. And, and just from area residents and their input, um, we want to have a great venue there. The idea is it's, it's the Gates Park uh, League no longer plays there. It's just not, it's not a great venue. Uh, they've been moving elsewhere. Their current venue is not great. We wanna give them a great venue to make this a community event. And that we, we felt as we worked with, through Leisure Services staff that that lower end was not being used well for that. Even when it was successful, the parking there, and it was just not suitable for making it the community gathering that we would like to make it. So that was the major, move for the basketball courts. The, um, the other portions in terms of, yes, we're moving the restroom and taking the old one out. Um, we have, um, um, we have uh, looked at the circulation, the beautification of the wall. Um, and um, I'm, I'm, is there something else that I'm missing from the question? <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I think we're going to be, I think we are going to be lessening the traffic concerns there the, uh, compared to what we have now with the, with the gravel and the uncontrolled intersection and the, um, the fact that it's not lined up with an intersection the way that we proposed it. Um, the one, the one, the, the other one does not. Is this one like green? Uh, I can't remember the name. Yeah, it's Lynn. Here's yep. Lynn. Uh, it's not lined up. I was going to say, it doesn't look like either one lines up. So. We are looking at this as being a very uh, low volume use space, more of a neighborhood park feel on this end with the trail connection to the north end and the higher use in that end. The idea is that this is a more beautiful, suitable, uh, multiple amenities with the playground uh, relocated outside the flood wall, the basketball court that would be available to kids to be able to play if there is an event going on on the north end. Uh, but again, the, lo the lower traffic volumes for people walking and and more of, more of the leisure side of, of picnicking and that kind of thing, and less, less on the high volume, high turnover use. So it would be two to the existing shelter and add another shelter or take that into consideration? The existing shelter inside the flood wall stays. We would be adding another shelter outside the flood wall. Okay. All right, thank you. Anyone else in the chamber is here to speak on this agenda item? Anyone else on the phone or Zoom here to speak on this agenda item? Okay. We have a motion. Uh, this is Schoberg. I'll make a motion that we Approve the request by Envision Architecture on behalf of the City of Waterloo Leisure Services for a special permit for the construction of a new re recreational facility at Burns Park located in the R112 Family Residence District located at 801 Campbell Avenue be approved for the following reasons. The existing pool facilities are beyond their lifespan and require replacement. The request would not appear to have a negative impact on the surrounding area and in fact would have a positive impact by improving recreational opportunities. 
It would not appear to have any impact on traffic or pedestrian traffic in the area as the parking lot and access points are not being changed. I'll second it, Sir Fling. Any discussion by the commission? Okay, all those in favor, state aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion is carried. Thank you. Okay, the next item on the agenda is a request by Zhang Lian for a special permit to allow for a religious institution in the R4 Multiple Re Residence District at 1115 West 4th Avenue. Can we have the staff report, please? Yeah, Thong Kong Lian is the applicant. The applicant's requesting to allow for a religious facility in an existing building at 1115 and 1125 West 4th Street. Uh, the request would not appear to have a negative impact on the surrounding area. The area contains residential structures, churches, and office buildings. The site pre is a previously housed a chiropractor's office. Uh, the proposed request is uh, not anticipated to impact pedestrian or traffic conditions in the area. Uh, there are no trails in the immediate vicinity. Uh, the uh, property in question is zoned R4, multiple residence district, and has been zoned as such since the adoption of the zoning ordinance in 1969. To the north is residential and office buildings zoned R4, multiple residence district. To the south and west is residential office buildings and commercial zoned R4, multiple residence district, R3, multiple residence district, and C1 commercial, neighborhood commercial district. To the east is residential and office buildings zoned R4, uh, multiple residence district, and R3, multiple residence district. Uh, the area consists of commercial and residential structures uh, built between the 1990s and 1960s. Uh, no buffers or screen will be required. Uh, a drainage plan will not be needed. The structure is uh, not located in a special flood hazard area. Um, Irving uh, Elementary is located about 400 feet to the east and Lowell Elementary is about 400 feet southeast of the special permit area. Uh, there is a 15 inch sanitary sewer underneath 4th Street and 43 inch storm sewer on the south side of 4th Street. There's also 15 inch sanitary sewer main underneath Baltimore Street and 33 three inch storm sewer on the east side of Baltimore Street. No utilities will be impacted uh, by this request. Uh, the future land use map designates this area as mixed residential, low, medium, high density residential, professional offices. The special permit request would be in conformance with the future land use map for the area. Uh, the, uh, the applicant's requesting a special permit to allow for a religious facility in an existing commercial building and the facility currently has approximately 20 church members. Sanctuary assembly area is 2,420 square feet in size. Based on the size of the sanctuary assembly area, the occupancy would be for 76 parking spaces, parking requirements for the religious facility. Um, is one parking space for each four persons. Uh, maximum occupancy, this would just require 19 parking spaces. Currently, there are 50 parking spaces in the parking lot, and the applicant exceeds the parking requirement by 31 spaces. If uh, other non-church uses are to operate uh, from the building, uh, which has finished basement level for a total finished floor area of 1,936 square feet, uh, then additional review of the required parking would be needed. Uh, the applicant uh, has already visited with building inspection, and there are a few minor fire and building code issues that will need to be addressed. Uh, the applicant uh, is not proposing to subdivide the property. Therefore, staff recommends the request by Thong Khan Lian for a special permit to allow for a religious facility to be located at 1115 and 1125 West 4th Street in the R4 Multiple Residence District be approved for the following reasons. Uh, the request would not appear to have a negative impact on the surrounding neighborhood, and the request would not appear to have a negative impact on pedestrian or vehicular traffic conditions in the area. And that's the staff report. Any questions for staff? Uh, uh, yeah, would it be necessary to add a condition to require that they uh, they have a plan to meet fire and building codes if the requests were approved? Uh, I just I know in the past we've we've had, ran into some things as far as making sure that we we meet those codes before instead of after the fact where it becomes maybe too much of a cost burden. Um, yeah, I mean that 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 could be uh, potentially added as a condition. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, at, at least, yeah, they, uh, they, uh, they, uh, applicant has uh, visited with uh, both fire inspection and, and, and building department, so they, they are aware of what those requirements may be. 
other questions for staff? Okay. That would be straight over staff, but that would be fine to add kind of our typical the final site plan is all applicable goals. All right. Is the applicant here or someone on behalf of the applicant? Okay. And just state your name for the record. Yeah, my name is Tong Liam. Okay. Yes. Um, is there anything you want to tell the commission? Oh, uh, we really need a permit. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, yeah. Any any questions? Any questions from anyone by phone or um, on Zoom? Okay. Right, thank thank you. you. Is anyone else here to speak on this agenda item? Or by um, here by phone or Zoom? Okay. We have a motion. Uh, yes, Lysdeco. I'll make the motion that the request by Tong Leon for a special permit to allow for a religious facility to be located at 1115 and 1125 West 4th Street in the R4 Multiple Residence District be approved. Um, with the condition that uh, all building and fire codes are met. Is there a second? Second, Schoberg. Any discussion by the commission? Okay, all those in favor, state aye. 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 And aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion carried. Okay, the next item on the agenda is a request by John and Dan Properties, LLC, to vacate city right of way along San Martin Drive between Bankers Boulevard and Hearst Drive, retain and retaining utility easements as required for the purpose of adding the land to the applicant's existing property. Um, we'll have the staff report, and then you do have a, a supplemental section that was passed out. Uh, this is Andara staff. Yes, there is an updated staff report in front of you. Uh, what was updated is the condition that a easement, utility easement, be retained over, or under, and upon the entire area to be vacated. Um, the two tracks consist of 1.44 acres. They came before the commission in 2017 uh, with this request, but they did not proceed with it at the time. Um, uh, the reason for the full easement over the entire vacate area is because of water works wants to build a new water line to make a loop in their system. And then also there's the overhead line from a, a mid American energy. So um, vacating the right of way wouldn't impact any utilities or future road expansions. Um, so our engineering and traffic departments have looked at that. So staff is recommending approval of the vacate request um, from a part of West San Martin Drive between Hearst Drive and Bankers Boulevard. Uh, the request would not appear to have a negative impact on the surrounding area, and the right-of-way does not appear uh, to be needed for any future street purposes, would not negatively impact uh, pedestrian and traffic conditions in the area, and uh, would not impact drainage in the area, and also with that condition that utility easement is retained over, under, and upon the entire area to be vacated. Questions for staff? Yes. Uh, this particular parcel of land or area of land wasn't in a former state-owned highway right away, was it? Yes, it was. So is it applicable to any state code that would go through yes, the Yes, we'd findings? have to go through 306 point. Two three code in order to offer back to original owners. So very good. As long as you're aware of that. Yep, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions for staff from the commission? <clears throat> okay. And anyone else on the phone by Zoom or in the chambers here to speak on this agenda item? We have a motion. I'll make a motion that the request to vacate a portion of West San Martin Drive right away located between Hearst Drive and Bankers Boulevard be approved 
uh, with the following condition that a utility easement is retained over, under, and upon the entire area to be vacated. Second, Mr. Sure. Okay, any further discussion by the commission? Okay, all those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carried. Next on the agenda is a request by Hong Wing Fang to vacate 60 linear feet of sidewalk in the R2, 1, and 2 family residence district located in front of 620 Byron Avenue. Do we have a staff report on this or updated? This is Schrader with staff. As the commission is aware, this item was on the agenda last month um, where it was tabled. Uh, so I won't go through the entire staff report, just provide kind of the update. During the tech review, the engineering department uh, noted that their agreement that the request should be denied uh, as this is a relatively easy infill project to connect Baltimore Street and Western Avenue. It was noted that the Complete Streets Advisory Committee voted to recommend denial of the request um, and had concerns about the precedent this would set for others to have segments of sidewalk um, that could be uh, connected by future sidewalk infill projects removed uh, at the October 27th meeting of the Complete Streets Committee voted to recommend a infill project um, as part of the request for the 2023 budget request uh, to do an infill on the remainder uh, of this missing segment. Um, at the October 11th, 2022 meeting, the Planning, Programming, and Zoning Commission tabled the item. Um, for the research after the meeting, it was discovered that the home was built in 1940 and sidewalks were required at that time. Uh, the commission in part tabled the item to see if the request could be denied, but that the requirement to reinstall the sidewalk be deferred until such time as an infill project was completed. It was determined that such a deferral could not be done uh, and it would set a bad precedent for improper removal of sidewalk. Therefore, staff recommends that the request by Hong Ling Fang to vacate 60 linear feet of sidewalk in the R2, 1 and 2 family residence district located in front of 620 Byron Avenue be denied for the following reasons. The sidewalk removal was done without a permit. It would set precedent for others to remove sidewalk and reduce walkability of neighborhoods and make future sidewalk infill projects more difficult. There's only a small uh, infill uh, project segment that would be required to complete the sidewalk network in this area, connecting homes by Habitat for Humanity and Baltimore Street and provide an alternate route to Irving Elementary School for walking uh, to West High. Uh, and the Complete Streets Advisory Committee had recommended denial of the request and is looking uh, at um, funding sources to complete the uh, sidewalk infill in this area. Questions for staff? Are there any questions? Any questions um, from anyone on Zoom or by phone? Okay. Um, does the applicant want to readdress the commission? I'll be abstaining also if they Okay. Okay. I might take off. Okay. If you want to come forward, you can. <laughs> My name is Hong Nail Fong. The uh, address is. 1620 Grand Avenue. Do you have any questions for me? Any questions for mm. Any questions by anyone on Zoom or by phone? Okay, thank you. Do we want to make a motion? Uh, yes. I I'm making this motion and I urge uh, our our code makers, our, our people above us and the council to maybe get this process correct. I will make the motion that the request by, by Hong Liang Fang to vacate 60 linear feet of sidewalk in the R2, 1 and 2 family residence district 
located in front of 620 Byron Avenue be approved for the following reasons. The house was built in 1940 and no one else around there is required to have a sidewalk. We need to get that right. Um, we have to have a second to discuss the motion. Do we have a second? Second, Schoberg. Mm -hmm. Is there discussion by the commission? So the current motion is to approve the request. Jamie Knudsen, city engineer. Um, I'm going to ask that you, this body reconsider that. Um, this is setting a terrible precedent. There are sidewalk all over town that are just like this and we do not allow folks to go ahead and do this kind of work. One, there was no permit taken out. Um, two, there, the council, the mayor and council have established a complete streets committee to encourage and to install additional sidewalk throughout this city. Is it perfect? No. Is it limited by funds? It is, but we have been doing infill projects over the last several years. My biggest concern is that you are now, if this goes through and it gets approved at council, that we are going to start seeing a large number of folks that will just show up and start removing their sidewalks and then coming and asking for forgiveness after the fact. Um, again, I would ask that this council or this body carefully consider what they are looking to do here because this is something that is precedent setting. We have vacated sidewalk in the past, but it has been very specific situations and very specific areas that we have done this. Um, and again, this is, this is precedent setting and you could be in for a whole lot of these folks coming in and asking to remove the sidewalk. The other thing is to keep in mind, should the money be appropriated for an infill project, all of us as taxpayers within the city of Waterloo would be putting, paying to put this sidewalk back. And I don't know that that's fair to ask all of the citizens of Waterloo to be paying to put back sidewalk that should not have been removed in the first place. So again, please consider what you're doing here and be very mindful of that. Any further discussion by the commission or comments? Otherwise, I'll take a roll call vote on the motion. Yes. Uh, again, I, I emphasize the fact that this was a house built in 1941. Everyone was required to have a sidewalk there and that was the only house built at that point in time. No one else around that, on that street, on that block has sidewalk. I feel like they do fall into a very special circumstance that isn't, necessarily fair. Uh, did they take the sidewalk out without a permit? Yes. Was that sidewalk being utilized by anyone? Probably not. And, uh, you know, we, we tried to get this correct and, well, here, here we're having a conversation to emphasize the importance of getting code correct. So I'll leave it at that. My only question would be, you know, I, I agree with you on that, but are we, are, yeah, we're setting, a, I think, a bad precedent, I, I think, going forward, but maybe that sidewalk's not being used now. But who's to say not later, 20 years down the road, and are we putting that burden on that next homeowner that was unfairly taken out in the first place? Because as we know, things do change. And I, I agree with what you're saying, um, most of it, but I think, you know, because it does seem funny that it's there. Um, but at the same time, I mean, we've seen things change and, um, we could be putting that, passing that burden along to the next person and then they're gonna come back on us. I guess what I've gotten out of that and Steph would correct me if I'm wrong, but there is uh, a goal to infill that entire street at some point. Mm -hmm. And if this is vacated, the sidewalk isn't forced to be put back in now, it would fall on the taxpayers so to put that he, in, I think. Yeah, yes. to Mr. Knudsen's point, that's, I mean, again, we're setting a precedent that taxpayers are willing to pay for someone else taking out their sidewalk without permission. Correct. And this is Commissioner Wilbur. I want to 
echo that, um, but as well honor the recommendation and the work of the Com uh, Complete Streets Advisory Committee. We you know, rely on them to give us recommendations on projects like this or applications like this. Um, and in the past, this commission has placed an emphasis on completing sidewalks and making that a priority for new development. And just because we don't necessarily have the budget to complete all sidewalks at this time in the city, I mean, if we had an endless um, budget, I mean, we would preferably have sidewalks all over. Um, it's safer um, for children, for pedestrians, for people with disabilities. Um, so um, I would like to honor that recommendation as well as uh, Mr. Knudsen's input as well. Um, Come forward. Can you just state your name again? Yep, Rob, Nich Rob Nichols, Council Liaison. I was wondering, do we have a, I guess, a database or a listing of how many of these standalone sidewalks there are, where we have like three, maybe parcels that are by themselves? Jamie Knudsen, City Engineer. I don't have that off the top of my head. Rob, um, we do have in our GIS database in the office a listing, a map of all of these, um, where all the sidewalk is. Um, so I'd be able to provide that if you were curious. This is Schrader um, with staff, and along with that map that shows where the sidewalk is, it shows where the sidewalk is. is so it shows the yep. gap. It doesn't necessarily have it analyzed to say there's one, a, one, one parcel, parcel here. gap here, a three parcel gap yep. here, but it yeah, could yeah. be reviewed to look at that. Any further discussion before we take a roll call vote on the current motion? Anyone by phone or Zoom? Yes. Dave Post and Council Liaison, I think it's a dangerous precedent that we're going down a rabbit hole that's got no bottom. I mean, I, 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 I support uh, Mr. Knudsen and the entire staff and uh, making sure that we don't have a number of these standalone sidewalks start being taken out because there's nothing to stop them if, uh, if we set that precedent today. Thank you for your time. Thank you. All right, um, so I'll go, I'll take a roll call vote. So the current motion. Okay. Um, is to approve the current request. Um, so voting in favor would be to approve the request. Um, okay, Commissioner Ewing. Janelle, are you still on the phone? Okay, she's not, I don't think she's on anymore. Did we have muted or something? Yeah, when, you, when she was on the phone. But she's not even on. She oh. hadn't previously been listed. Do we have enough to vote then? If she, if Ali abstained and Janelle's and Steve is not here. Yeah, we still have five. Okay, we're good. <laughs> All right, Commissioner Surfling, what is your vote? I agree, I agree with the staff recommendation that it be denied. So nay. Okay. Commissioner Schoberg. Nay. Okay, Commissioner Lysical. Nay. Commissioner Shirk. Nay. Okay, and the chair votes nay. Okay. Um, so what are we voting on? Uh, um. This, this is what do we do procedurally? <laughs> this is Schrader with staff. I did not bring a copy of the um, admin rules for the commission with me, but I, I do remember this fairly well. What the rules uh, state is that you can uh, make a motion uh, alternatively, but you don't have to. Absent another motion, the request failed to get a recommendation of approval. Okay. Does someone from the commission want to make an alternative motion? Doesn't sound like we need 
too? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Those are good. All right. Um, so in terms of yep. next steps for the applicants. So the Planning Commission has not recommended uh, uh, approval of the vacate. It can still go on to the City Council, assuming uh, the applicants want it to. We'll touch base with them to verify if they want it to go on and what a timeline for getting it to the Council would be. Thank you. Okay, any um, additional discussion items? I would just note that the next meeting is December 13th. Please continue to, if you already know that you will not be able to be in attendance, um, please let city staff know. Um, otherwise, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Okay, all those in favor, state aye. Aye. Okay, any opposed? All right, motion carried.